And I'm going to flip the switch on Facebook. And I'm going to watch over here to make sure we come on live. I found, like, what's his name on the, on the uh, awards. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> okay, let's. And now what are you going to do technically? <laughs> Tell us more. Hello. All right. Hmm. Okay. Welcome, guys. Let's just have a chat here while we're waiting for people to join up. Uh, it's always good, you know, because we, we had to slide it out. Well, just to let you guys behind the scenes here, we always have a little bit of technical issues when it comes to getting online. There's never a smooth entry. <laughs> but this one, we had several technical glitches, but I'm rolling pretty good. Barbara, is everything sounding okay on your end? Yeah, I think we're uh, we're. We're good to go here. Okay, and I'm pulling up the comments. You guys let me know how we sound, if there's anything we need to adjust, or if we can adjust it, because some stuff is beyond my control. Talk, Barbara. Maybe I can change your volume. Well, let's see how the volume is. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I just good. can't hear you very well, but that's, uh, that's because I forgot to bring the, the ear pods. <laughs> my fault. My own fault. Ah, Sleep that's okay. that I made. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. It happens. We just got to deal with it. Yeah, okay, well. The truth is I need a hearing aids, but that's another subject. Yeah, let's so, do one thing at a time. One body part at a time. <laughs> okay, well, welcome to episode 271 of The Groom Pod, also live number 18, I think, recorded on September 27th, 2020 in Snohomish, Washington and Tucson, Arizona. This, oh, why am I starting without you introducing us? Let's just start again, because <laughs> we're live, why the hell not? Well, okay. okay. Well, I don't know. Hello, groomers. Hi, Susie. What's up? Hi, Groom Pack. <laughs> Let's start again. Welcome to episode 271 of the Groom Pod, recorded on September 27th, 2020 in Snohomish, Washington and Tucson, Arizona. This podcast is brought to you by listener support. That's you guys. And through our kind sponsors, Best Shot, Show Season, Evolution Shears, The Absorber and Stazco. Barbara and I are going to talk about bath bombs this week, and Barbara's going to review a shampoo from Davis that has hydrogen peroxide in it, and we're going to answer a couple of Facebook questions if we have time. So, Barbara, what's new with Benzoyl you this week? Benzoyl peroxide. What did I say? Hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen. <laughs> I wrote benzoyl and I said hydrogen. <laughs> so it's right here. Benzoil. I can show it to you on the outline. There it is, the dreaded outline. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have an outline. I just must. All right, Barbara. Well, a lot of good it did you. Yeah, I never look at it. It's. I think someone pointed out to me last week that it's all about writing and remembering because I have it and I hold it in my hand like a prop and I do occasionally glance at it mostly to remember all of our sponsors. <laughs> but <laughs> I, think, I think the thing about outlines is that the creating of them is what creates the structure. You know, so you get that structure in your mind and uh, it, it doesn't matter if you follow it perfectly, but the, uh, the act of creating the outline yeah. is uh, what kind of gets your mind in gear. I think you're right. Yeah. So, the um, how was your week? You know, I had a fairly pleasant, almost happy. I could almost call it a happy week. You I know, like other than the fact that it's still uh, like 105 degrees here. You know, we're in this like a record heat for the time of year. You know, we've had we 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 definitely are showing signs of climate change. We've had the most hottest July, most hottest August, most hottest uh, September and record ever. And uh, it's still going, usually by the end of September, we're easing into the 90s and down. And we had a couple of days like that, but still back up into 103, 105 degree days. And uh, that, that kind of heat just, 
takes uh, your willpower away. I can't even imagine. <laughs> well, you want actually, to eat ice cream. You want to. You want to drink soft drinks you, with a lot of ice. You want. You want to. Um, you know. You want to treat yourself because you can't stand the heat. You want to lay down and not be active. You know, it's just a. Uh, it ta the heat takes a toll. Well, we're slipping right into fall. We had two and a half inches of rain in the last two days and everything is moist, but it's still kind of warm out. So this is the moment at time where we have some humidity. And really I had a lot of humidity in the trailer because I had the windows open and it rained inside. So there was just extra water everywhere, <laughs> including in my tow vehicle because I forgot to unplug the sunroof drains. So I came out, sat to a wet seat. That was, that was pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these, yeah. Hey, I found an app. I think we measured, we've got all the measurements for the axle. So I should be back on the road pretty soon. So yeah. You should be back in the safe zone soon. Hey, yeah. I had, I had an interesting grooming where I accepted a new client that's a, a Welsh Terrier that was um, 86 from our groomer in the state of Washington. I don't know who it was. Hello, whoever groomed him. Lucy up there and um, <laughs> sent her away uh, uh, and, and suggested that she get uh, hyper-medicated for the next groomer. What um, did they, they sent her so like five states else, away? This is somebody else's <laughs> Willis. Right? right, right. Right, and so um, she found her way to me and I took her on and I was successful. So I successfully groomed somebody else's, Willis's dog. Now I wonder who's grooming Willis. You know, <laughs> and, I hope that, and I hope that just the change of person and, you know, and she was not easy. But the difference is that Lucy the Welsh Terrier was all about uh, the mouth. And she was like serious, growling, lunging, snapping. You know, like I had to tell, you know, and the owner gave me this, uh, well, she'll snap at you, but she's never bitten anybody. Well, she's never bitten anybody because she was 86 from the groomers. Right. And, and because, <laughs> you know, they're not grooming her face. She's, she's okay. She's just a little bit touchy about other things, but her face, she's like really serious. Doesn't want you to groom her head. And, um, we found a way where we could kind of like put the mouth of the muzzle over her, over her mouth and then just hold it shut without actually snapping the whole muzzle in place. And I was able to get the sides of the face and down the, the top and, and um, do the eyebrows. And I put a nice little terrier pattern on her and I heard those beloved words. Oh, oh Barbara. I don't think she's ever looked this good before. I love hearing those words. You're right. Don't Did you, you swell up? Those? And this is with a difficult dog. I mean, the head wasn't perfect, but it was distinctly a Welsh Terrier head. You could tell. And um, we'll get better. And uh, so I... Um, so that gave me a little ego boost, whereas losing Willis, of course, was devastating to my self-image. But uh, so I'm back uh, feeling competent again. And um, that helped make make my week. And then I had some a couple of great successes with uh, this this new shampoo that I tried. Cool. Let, I just wanted to say that sometimes with those difficult dogs, it is a subconscious personality conflict with the person and a change can make an awfully bad dog less able to predict what's going on and can give them a new start. And I bet you gave this dog a new start and I just am so pleased yeah. with that. Yeah, and this dog is actually, even though she was a little bit more scary than Willis, she was more, more able to be handled because what makes Willis so difficult is the way he uses his paws. 
It's brutal. You know, he, Dogs he like that. He breaks your, your grip with his paws. And um, he, uh, and that's one of the things that just makes him, you know, not to mention the alligator roll in the air trick that he can do with restraints. But Lucy was um, more restrainable and more just with the mouth um, and the growling and the lunging and less about um, pawing and keeping you from being able to keep your hands on it. So Yay! You know, I just wish the next groomer the best of luck with uh, Mr. Willis, and I hope they find somebody that can do it. I if predict not, he'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I predict he will be back. Absolutely. He, been there, done that. He came back the first time. He'll come back again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally. So let's see. Anything else going on? I think that was about it. Uh, oh, I did stop driving. I have to be home. So I'm, so I'm an at-home groomer now instead of... A mobile groomer. All right. Yeah, that's a little different. Um, oh, you know what? We're doing uh, the Wisconsin invitation. The uh, the Wisconsin Pet Style yeah, Invitational. You know what? Susie, what is the time of our presentation for the Wisconsin Invitational? Because me... I thought it was like four thirty Eastern time and that's the time that Dave Campanella is stating that he's presenting. So he might be on a I different day that, maybe. No, the eighteenth he said. Oh, we're the seventeenth. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> because I don't want to miss Dave Campanella's thing and I certainly don't want to be put up against him. Yeah. No, I no, think I we're can't. the day before. So we're the 17th at 4.30. That's the thing that used to always, like, was one of the things that was painful about the uh, trade shows is that they would have two equally desirable speakers presenting at the same time. And it would mean that I couldn't go see somebody that I really wanted to see. And then it made it very difficult culture um the the groomers so okay we are on the 17th and i think we're like 4 30 eastern time i believe that is correct and i'm trying to find it but somehow i have got myself on the wrong day here so anyway I've taken the entire day off so that i can plug into the event and be um, just like saturated with the learning experience and the teaching experience and not have to go from hands on grooming and jump into the other side of my brain. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yes. Just like totally be absorbed in the educational experience. And uh, I'm just so excited for that day. It just big crossed it out in my book. Yeah, I'm going to take half the day off, but I'm going to groom in the morning. But I'll be ready. I'll be ready to be sidekickery and, and back on trackery and anything you need me to do, I'll be there for you, not to mention yeah, technical so I, support. Yeah, you'll, you'll be okay. You'll yeah. Be well. probably switch easier than I can. I am uh, kind of uh, monotasking. <laughs> I'm no longer a polytasker, a, mo a multitasker. I'm mono, you know, one thing at a time, girl. <laughs> so I'm plugging away at my, um, at the PowerPoint, and I have to confess that I'm uh, um, halfway through, and I have like over 50 slides. So uh, I'm either going to have to shorten them, and so that means that uh, it's not, I'm not leaving enough room for us to chat. And I, uh, I think that it's not going to, it's not going to divide up exactly like I thought. I thought that the silicones would be a whole sec second half, but I think that it's going to, silicones will be more like a third of the presentation. And I still leave time for uh, chatting, and uh, I've got a good 
I've got a beautiful pie chart. I've got a, a good, um, really, real deal formulation that illustrates the use of additives. Um, I've got, I, I'm looking forward to presenting this material. It's just coming together really well. And I think it's going to be uh, an enjoyable and, and enlightening presentation. And you know, I, I can't escape when I talk about ingredients, I cannot escape how they are marketed. So, you know, it doesn't really say anything in my description of the class about discussing marketing, but be prepared for me to speak to that issue. Excellent. I love that issue. It's one of the ones you are so passionate about and educated in. So that'll be cool. Hey, you know what is also really fun? Bath bombs. Bath bombs are the bomb. <laughs> I, I just had to say Bath that. Bath bombs are the bomb? Yeah, I just had to say that. So we had a question on Facebook about, um, fr actually, from Renee. Uh, says, hey, everyone, what was the outcome of the micro bubble systems, Nagayu systems? Is it all marketing and hooey, or do they really work? And I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to talk about bath bombs because they're similar aren't yeah. they yeah so let me well, tell you that the, the, the uh, nagayu nagayu um matter uh, topic is what drew me into bath bombs i was going to tell that when story I looked at the ingredients for the nagayu tablets i recognized the bath bomb so yeah, we recognized that they that they were essentially doing a bath bomb through their quote micro bubbles, and, and I, yeah, and to be honest, I have always had uh, some skepticism about the efficacy of the micro bubbles because they had a diagram that would show the micro bubbles going down the sides of the hair follicle of the hair shaft inside the hair follicle. And um, my knowledge of the attachment between the skin and the hair follicle is that there is no like air in there where the micro bubbles could actually travel. So that was what we call pseudoscience, that kind of claim that the micro bubbles actually went all the way down the hair follicle. They might clean out the top of the hair follicle, but so does um, the recirculating bather spray. You know, I don't think that you need micro bubbles to clean the base or the top, the pores. Well, I remember pores. being at SuperZoo with you and seeing it for the first time in person and noticing that it was just kind of a shower head with a compartment to put the little tablet in. And I thought there's got to be a way that we can do some kind of application of this idea in our recirculating bathing systems. Because basically, we're kind of creating a similar uh, massaging very, feature. Yeah. 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 Well, see, there's two things. The Nagayu was actually two things. So in the beginning, it was a micro bubble system that, you know, it was like $1,000 or more that you put in the bottom of the tub and it made ultra, ultra tiny, teeny weeny bubbles, right? And then you used this uh, tablets in that system. And then the next version of it that we saw was a spray, a uh, handheld sprayer that the tablet fit right on the mouth of the sprayer and the spray went through the, dissolved the tablet as you sprayed. And that's the one that most closely resembles what we do with the Bathing Beauty. The micro bubbles is the expensive technology that I think is um, crap science. <laughs> science Marketing. That. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so what is actually in a bath bomb in general? 
Well, the, the, it's two, the two main things in the bath bomb are citric acid and baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. So they're creating an acidic nature of a rinse kind of thing? Well, you know, the, I don't know if it's acidic because the, the, so, the, the sodium bicarbonate is alkaline. And the citric acid is citric, but what it creates is, is uh, kind of bubbles that, um, and you know, and and a lot. Usually, there's also um, some mineral salts. You know, so it's like some Epsom salts, kind of a Epsom salts in the bath bomb. So the bath bomb just creates a chemical reaction that makes for, you know, like this kind of um, sizzling, sudsy stuff, right? Right. Now, on the expensive Nagayu system website, they recommend using it as a rinse after the bath. And I do that with the bath bombs through the recirculator. Is that kind of what you do with it? Yeah, I do. we do the bath bombs usually first. And I, I noticed on the, uh, I noticed this morning that uh, Christine Pearson, whom I greatly respect, was talking about using um, Dr. What's his name's Epsom salts. Right. Dr. Uh, uh, my brain is, uh, I have a dead spot there. <laughs> um, it's on the tip of my brain, but it's just like not working its way to my tongue. It is not Teal, Dr. Teal. Dr. Teal, yeah. I really like that brand and they, and they use essential oils or something to a different kind of fragrances that have a little different effects, so they say, um, which you can take seriously or not but it, they're good products and there's no reason to not just use that you don't necessarily need a round ball you can do just an epsom salts bath and get a, a good uh, kind of uh, treatment spa uh, clarifying it helps to clarify the skin is what I'm going to say about the bath bomb or the Epsom salts. Um, it gives it a nice, fresh, um, lightly um, conditioned, lightly conditioned, very then lightly. You wash the, but then you usually, I usually do it before the bath and then uh, a bath and a uh, a light conditioner. I am just using conditioner less and less now that I'm using shampoos that have more conditioning ingredients in them. I am I'm using the mat, the best shot max to the max. <laughs> <laughs> well, what so what I do is I bathe the dog normally and then I don't use a conditioner. Instead, I run the bath bomb and through the recirculator as the final rinse. And then I give it a quick rinse off afterwards. And it makes the hair feel nice and clean. It doesn't make it heavy. I think it feels good. I don't know. I like the bubbles, but I'm with you on the Epsom salts work well also as a, uh, well, I would probably use Epsom salts before more than I would use aspirin, but who knows? You know, it's all up to what you like, right? Right, so, and if you don't have if you don't have a Nagayu system or a recirculating system, you're just doing the hand baby. You can dissolve some Epsom salts, and I love the Dr. Teals, uh, but it's a little bit more expensive than than just the straight magnesium sulfate Epsom salts. You can dissolve the Epsom salt in a pitcher of water. And, and pour it over, <laughs> or you could draw a, 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 a kind of a tub full of water 
and dissolve the Epsom salts in the water and then soak the whole dog in the tub if you're a vet. Yeah. Okay, that's so so we all know that I'm an extremely few frugal person and I did not want to spend the money on things like bath bombs. So I was in the dollar store and I saw bath bombs there and I happen to have brought a package of those with me here today. These are the bath bombs that you can get for a dollar. There's three in the package and the ingredients are exactly what Barbara says. It's sodium bicarbonate, citric acid, and sodium sulfate. So basically exactly what Barbara was describing. That's three for a dollar. If you want to use it, I would go with this because there's nothing really scary in here that would be toxic from a place uh, like the China, fun right? Naturals, fun naturals. They're a good size. You don't need a great big human size. You don't need a great big baseball size bath bomb for uh, a pet grooming. You just that yeah uh, we use the spa naturals from the dollar store too because likewise i felt that simple was better the big difference is the sodium sulfate in the bath in the spa natural baths and the magnesium sulfate in epsom salts and the magnesium uh is a possibly a better choice just down the aisle, just down the aisle from the bath bombs at the dollar store are the packages of Epsom salts. Yeah, you could mix the two. I do I that. And nothing. Yeah, I might try that. I might try that just to, just to see if any smoke arises from the tub or anything. So, <laughs> so there. You do kind of want to check out that mixing stuff before you have an actual animal. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are purpose built, as in doggy products, doggy cat products that are fizzy, like the fizzy paw tablets from Warren London. Is that the right name there? Do I have that right? Yeah, the fizzy tablets from Warren London for uh, for feet. Yeah, yes. That fit in there. They've got a lot of ingredients. You right. Know, they're, 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 a lot of ingredients but it's basically the same thing and if you're so inclined and you have a budget for more in london you can you know if you're more confident with a pet related product use those i mean if you're more confident with a pet related tablet you can try to i don't know if we can actually get the nagayu tablets anymore you know what happened yeah, to that? Yeah, they're on the website, so yeah, they're up they're on again. The website. Yep, they're yeah, up again. There, there was a the, the marketing of the Nagayu has kind of um, well almost disappeared, um, and uh, it had they there was a big copyright issue. Uh, there a little legal problem that um, kind of. Uh, tended to, uh, they, they withdrew a little bit, much less prominent marketing, marketing than they did for a while. And the people, the two people who were uh, kind of the face of Nagayu, they kind of dropped their association. So they're not there anymore. Okay, so two other things, well, two other immediate things. Faith, the marshmallow lady, has created also a fizzy tablet, and she's sending some to both you and I to test out. So we're going to get the oh, opportunity. I, I know. It's a lavender, lightly lavender-scented one, and I'm excited about that. And that's not why I brought the subject up, but it just so happened to coincide with her sharing this with us. So I thought that was well, pretty cool. She's sharing ingredients, so... We'll look forward to um, kind of um, ex experimenting with that, trying that out, trialing it, as they say. And, and Ladon, Ladon would like to know if you can put essential oils in with your bath bomb. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you just but you got to know that essential oils and they don't really mix. 
I mean, it's without an emulsifier in there, you're just going to have the essential oil. It's like if you have a recirculating system, you'll probably keep it mixed all right, but. Um, It'll make a delightful smell in your grooming room, in your bathroom. <laughs> yeah, my, my experience with essential oils in the tub. God, look at my, what is that look? Jesus. Barbara, keep your CNN face on. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, I, it happens. There it is. There she is. Yay. <laughs> I don't know if everybody else's image of me is jerking around as much as my image of me is, but uh, some of them are horrifying. Yeah. It freezes at just horrible moments. I you have bad, a bad gremlin. internet. There's a gremlin <laughs> in the glitch here. So anyway, um, essential oils in the tub, my experience has been that you have to use a shitload. Right. <laughs> you have to use a lot of essential oils to get a fragrance that actually ends up lasting on the dog um, because they're just not. Uh, and that's why I have my doubts about essential oils in shampoos, because I know that people are not using um, as much as I had to use. Right. You know, all right. Well, shall we move on to our next subject, which is a review of the Davis Benzoyl Peroxide Shampoo. Which I happen to have. Excellent. Right here. Now, see, now it froze. Okay, here we go. Benzoyl Peroxide. All right. So, um, people who know me well over the years might recognize that I have had a lot of issues with uh, Davis about ingredient disclosure. I remember so that. I, that's a caveat. I have. And in fact, what I'm going to do, um, what I'm going to do about the ingredient thing is I'm going to post, um, I'm going to post a little writing about the ingredients, because the ingredients as described on Amazon and the ingredients as described on the National Institute of Health website and the ingredients as described on the bottle are a little different. Huh. They're not, it doesn't mean that there's actually different ingredients. They're not significantly different, but, um, they're described in a different, different wordage in such a way as to be less or more uh, clear about what's in the bottle. So basically, um, I bought this Davis product because the other benzoyl peroxide shampoo that I had, which was called Benzoyl SS, stunk. <laughs> it just, you know, um, the last time that I used it, which was on a wire fox terrier, the owner, I, I used it and I was, I bought it for them and I was going to give it to her. She wouldn't even take the bottle. She said, no, this just smells too bad. I can't, I can't use it. And, um, and it's because of the sulfur in the oh. product. So this product, this benzoyl peroxide from Davis. And the thing about Davis company is that they are very good at knocking off veterinarian formulas, formulations and creating their own, their own uh, excellent medicated products. So I kind of trust Davis with the medicated almost more than with the pet shampoos. Um, and I'm less uncomfortable about their dodgeball ingredient listing uh, with their medicated. And I have a pretty good notion that um, it's benzoyl peroxide in a, um, in a surfactant base with um, propylene glycol as an extra moisturizer in it. And we, I used, I bought it today because I had another 
wire fox terrier experience of the coat just not coming out nice after the bathing. And this was a dog that I groomed in the spring and then they um, went to Colorado to sell their home and come back and they're just now back after several months. And the dog had an episode of bad fleas and the coat just looked awful. And so I did the bath bomb and I did a clarifying shampoo and I did the silicone rinse and the, it still went home with a slight grayish tinge and feeling a little greasy, a little less than perfect. So I thought, I need a benzoyl peroxide shampoo. Interestingly, possibly, and maybe you don't give a damn, <clears throat> The most I've used this on is wire fox terriers. Oh. And it, so the first time that I used a benzoyl peroxide was on a wire fox terrier that just had the ickiest, greasiest, ugliest coat. And I used it three times and the coat was never bad again. Now, and wouldn't I, that be a good choice for schnauzer backs too? Yes. Okay. There, it would be the choice for bumpy schnauzer backs anytime it's actually benzoyl peroxide does not have to wait for a medical excuse to use it anytime you've got an overly greasy coat that just isn't responding um to your dawn or whatever you use <laughs> your clarifying shampoo <laughs> let's just say you do use dawn okay i don't i, I don't judge you for that I've used it, it will degrease a lot. But if that fails, or your whatever your degreasing shampoo Grime just time. doesn't give you the result that you think you could get, you ought to get, yeah. then a benzoyl peroxide shampoo. And anytime there's, and we use the benzoyl peroxide shampoo on that terrier, and she came out lovely, Susie. I mean, Yvonne was so impressed. Yvonne has never used the benzoyl peroxide. And she wanted to use her regular bath bomb and decreasing kind of bartending thing that she wanted to do. And I said, no, we're going to use this shampoo. And she used it, and now she's in love with it and singing its praises in the back room. Oh, my benzoyl peroxide. She always sings. <laughs> and... Um, so tell me so this, you, did you did you run it through the recirculator or did you apply it directly? We applied it directly and then rinsed it with the okay. recirculator and let it sit for five minutes. And, and I, if you leave it, however bad the greasiness is, you would extend the, the time that you leave it on the coat. And likewise, if it starts to get too dry, you would reduce the time that you use it on the coat. So you want to leave it on the coat from two to 10 minutes, somewhere in there. And, um, and the, the wire fox came out sparkling white. Her colors in her jacket looked good again. And the whole coat felt good again, felt right again. So then we used it um, yesterday on a uh, malty shih tzu mix that we've had we have that's had like a chronic uh, flakiness up around the base of the tail and in front of the base of the tail there that area about two inch area it's just been chronically flaky and i've used a dandruff shampoo and stuff like that on it and we've done the bath bomb on him and um yvonne did the benzoyl peroxide yesterday and voila nice toro's coated skin came out looking really nice so with that in mind um i mean and that you would not have thought it really needed a medicated but as a dandruff shampoo because sometimes dandruff shampoo is over seborrheic you know it's like they're just it um 
not always associated with dry skin. And this product is formulated with the moisturizer. So it might be, and it is, um, propylene glycol, uh, which is a, a, actually a fabulous moisturizer. It's just not a popular with the uh, natural people. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's a good shampoo and it's a, it's a uh, problem solver shampoo. So for that reason, I would include it in my uh, liquid tools. My liquid All right. Toolbox. Cool. Good words of wisdom. Okay, well, let's move on to a couple other questions. That uh, first one comes from Ashley Ann, who asks two different questions. First question is, you're updating your book. She wants to know about that. Say that again, please. You're updating your book, and she wants to know what book, what are you updating, that kind of thing. Oh, what I'm updating on the book right now, I'm focusing on the groomer's glossary that was like at the end of the book and attached to the book and helped you understand the uh, ingredients that I listed as examples throughout the book. Well, now I'm ex greatly expanded, more than double, probably tripled the size of the groomer's glossary and just a lot of informative information and even a sense of humor in there. I tried to not let it be quite so dry. Some first person bee bird comments. Um, it's just a, it's a, it's less uh, dictionary like and more a really another way to understand products if perhaps small bites, ingredient by ingredient. And when one definition raised another question, I answered that other question. So it's been sort of laborious for me because I have to go back and forth and make sure that I'm covering it, it all very well. And um, I, I was hoping to be done by the end of the year and then I got sidetracked doing this live webinar, mainly because we haven't done one in a year or two. And I really felt I needed to uh, take the opportunity to, to do a teaching webinar. And so as soon as I wrap up that, I'll be back on the, you know, and, I, and, I, and actually I'm still, it's very close to finished. Excellent. So I'll tell you that. And I'm going to be selling that as a separate product. Good. And then I'll go and upgrade the book book. Cool. But this groomer's glossary is nearly done. It, uh, it should be available uh, in the first quarter of the new year. And I'm very pleased with how it's shaping up. And I think it will be way more valuable than even previous glossary has been. She also wants to know, what do you think about frothing? Oh, wah, man, wah, 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 wah. Yeah, we've tried frothing. Uh, we've Just, tried frothing. Yeah, conden <laughs> the condensed version uh, is, it's a lot of hype. Hey, you know, if you want to do it, do it. If it works for you, do it. Um, I think it's probably more valuable to people that don't have a recirculating system because it's another way of kind of uh, applying shampoo and um, may, it's a way for less shampoo to apply to a larger area, okay? And you do it by whipping air through the shampoo and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with frothing. I love foaming face cleaner. I love, you know, I love, I like foaming hand cleaner. I love foaming. Um, She's into foam, folks. <laughs> you know, foaming has, has a, a function and a, a place. 
and if you want to froth, go for it. Cool. Um, Good enough. But it's not necessarily going to help everybody uh, in a, in the, my preferred way is to use a recirculating system. All right. Diane Curtis asks, how do you tactfully fire a client you just don't want to deal with anymore, especially when they are a referral from a very good client and you don't want to upset the good client? I actually had this happen. It was one of the doodles that was really a high maintenance even though the lady was nice it took me forever to dry the dog she was a referral from a lady i've been grooming forever and i had to tap dance my way out of that so what would be your suggestion well that is definitely a tap dance uh kind of a moment um you know i i'll tell you I what would, i did if you it's want always it's always good to tell the truth, you know, and you, but the, the thing about the truth is that how you word the truth makes a huge difference to how the truth is received. You know, you can't just say the truth is I hate grooming your dog. <laughs> yeah, not received well, I'm sure. <laughs> you, 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 but you can say the truth is this isn't working out. Uh, like I had hoped it would. So my approach was, and you might remember, because it was only like a year ago, I told the client who did the referral all along that I was having a difficult time drawing the dog, that in the mobile situation, drawing a doodle of that much hair isn't really financially profitable unless you charge a crazy amount of money not to mention it takes me forever just sitting there drawing the dog and it's tiring and it makes my back hurt and blah 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 but i didn't say those parts i, I just told her that it was very difficult to get the dog dry in a mobile situation what do i do and she said do you want me to talk to her about it? I said, yeah, I need to let her go. It's not working for me. So my client that I love and that extra specially good client that you don't want to insult, she actually facilitated the firing for me. How lucky am I? Yeah, that was good luck. And that was good thinking to cover your base where it mattered the most first. Good. Well, I hope that helps. Yeah, I hope that helps too. Let us know. Keep us yes. informed. What yes. did you do and how did it work? Yeah. <laughs> you want to know about your customer successes, your customer um, relations successes and failures because um, that's a really good point. Those are good things to keep on covering. You know, like we all have successes and failures in how we've put things and, and how we, you know, how how our words have been received and um, you know like you can almost tell immediately by people's body language and and facial expressions of course now they're wearing a mask so you can't see the sour lemon just the <laughs> eyes you have to look at the eyes but you can tell on their face and their body when uh, they don't like what you've just said and then you might take a moment to slip that in another way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this mask thing is killing me because I'm having to make eye contact way more than I'm comfortable with. Just to figure out what people's intentions are, I gotta look them right in the eye and it just freaks me out. I hate that kind of intimacy with anybody, <laughs> really. Oh, oh my I God. Don't. Yeah, I know, I don't. you're good at it. I don't. I like eye contact. I like bringing them to to me. I like um, I like say, wait a minute. Perhaps I can put that another way. <laughs> you know, like, uh, are you finding that hard to swallow? Let me feed it to you. Here's a little, <laughs> here's know, a little like, here's a little whipped cream on top. How's that? <laughs> yeah, let's put a little whipped cream on top. Let's just try a, another recipe. Here we go. You know, no, I, um, I, I like intimacy in uh, relationships. Probably 
more than I should. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, a little eye contact can go a long way, and you have to you have to be careful because there are some people like cultures like uh, like say Arabic men do not want to have co eye contact with uh, white ladies. They just don't. Right. <laughs> they have to uh, sort of like speak to their face without actually engaging their eyes unless they initiate. Uh, right, right. So before we let you guys go, uh, since I have everybody on camera and Barbara as well, I got these shirts. They are groom pod shirts. Oh, yeah. See that? Oh, yeah, and, the groom pod in the front. Yeah, yeah in nice. black, except for they're almost, v yeah, they're v-necked. What do you think? It's, yeah, if I can, one. if, okay, because I got you one. But they are a little see-through. They're lightweight. I like this design with it just on the pocket. Now that I'm wiggling it around, nobody can see it. With the design just on right the on pocket. The yeah, right on yeah. the movie. But I have to find a different printer. Now that I know I like the shirt with a different printer, that'll print the white a little bit more solid. And I think I've got a decent shirt that we can really get out there and market and give away and have some fun with. Much better than the white ones. The white ones are super reasonably priced and we can make a little money off of them. But I really don't like white. Actually, in the yeah, big world... Like in the universe, I'm not actually allowed to own anything white because I cannot keep it on for more than like five or six seconds before I've put a stain on it and then it's ruined forever. So I just don't have any white. As you guys know, I have a lot of black and dark in colors and not much white. So I hate those white shirts. There you go. A confession. Okay. Well, I think we're going to wrap make it up for today. That oh, that too. Yeah. They make you look fat. Yeah. Not a fan. <laughs> No, I'm a colors girl. I like the colors. All right, Barbara, let's go back up to my face instead of looking at the shirt. And um, thanks for being here and doing this live thing. So the reason we're doing this live thing is because I've just been so behind struggling to catch up with all the beautiful editing we need to do. But this show is going to go out naked with its warts and scars and ums and ahs and big pauses and everything. I'm just going to put it out the way it is. Hope you guys can suffer through. We'll be back on schedule with recording and editing hopefully by next week with the exception of I'm going to have to edit the Wisconsin groomers pet stylist imitational video and that may take me a week it may even take me two so as soon as we get that shot I'm going to probably have to delve into that and we may have a couple more unedited episodes coming so there you go we gotta, we gotta do that soon yes we do Miss Bird I'm yeah. waiting on your word and then we'll get on it uh. Waiting on me again. <laughs> well, not to worry. Ah, there she is. Here behind, how do you like my designer glasses? I yeah. think they're very this stylish. Is a good, uh, eighty year old lady, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> I was looking at those pictures of all the speakers for that invitational. And you know what? You look freaking awesome, Barbara. You don't look eighty. You don't even look seventy. I'm telling you. I You're know, a rock star. Yeah, but you didn't see me before didn't see the before shot. This might take me a half an hour before we, uh, at least half an hour before we go live. Ah, it's all uh, worth it. It's worth it. Because, boy, there is a, there is an 80-year-old lady behind here. <laughs> I see her every morning, every night. Yeah, I know she's there. Uh, <laughs> Well, keep yeah. her in there, all right? Just do we just do a remarkable job of uh, straightening her up <laughs> for the live shot. All right. Well, I, I guess it, it just goes to show. If you take a little bit of time, you can cover anything up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but at <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, okay. I should become makeup artist to the groomers. You know? Yes. Like, I, you know, like I know we should. I I know. I was thinking that. You know, we should, I should have a booth where I just make them up. You know, like here, let me do you. Let me groom you. You know, like, and there's a lot of groomers that do use makeup and do know how to kind of uh, put a bow on the package. But there, an awful lot of us just don't give a shit about how we look. And uh, that shows. Yeah, yes, it does. <laughs> hey, look, I, I pasted my hair down. 
Yeah. Look, no I flyaways. Yeah, yeah. Best I shot. Best shot Ultramax spray on revitalizing yeah, sprays. Yeah, a little dark makeup up on your forehead there, and then just kind of, we could fix that up. Or I could turn this yeah. light off and wouldn't have that shiny bald head. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you, uh, before we bail on this, since this will be very current, you guys don't forget to watch that HBO Max show, Hot Dog. I think it's pronounced Hot Dog. Oh, is it? Like tonight or something? It's oh, any there was a yeah. Friday one. Oh, how do I get to it? You have do to you pay. No. But I I have a jailbroke fire stick, so I will get in there and watch it eventually. But you have to buy it. It's something you have to buy. <sighs> hey, maybe the groom pod will buy it for you for the month. Yeah, I know. Well, uh, groom pod. <laughs> buy me so much i know but i <laughs> we'll we'll talk later on that stuff hey guys thanks for being here groom pack we really appreciate you we appreciate all the support and uh yeah let's do it again next week all right hey i'll be here or maybe there <laughs> cool happy grooming everybody bye bye now take care and don't forget to wear those masks keep it up we need to take care of each other